The topic of LGBTQ plus characters in anime have always been a touchy subject within the anime community. From straight washing to misgendering and straight up using subtle slurs, the community hasn't been very kind to these characters. You would think that as a community that comes to be all inclusive and for outcasts of society, that we would be far more accepting and understanding. That is sadly not the case. Today we'll be addressing these issues and first and foremost, I will be using subtle slurs to get my points across. I hope you can understand and watch the preceding video with caution. If you haven't already realized, the Attack on Titan series is pretty LGBTQ plus friendly. From our lesbian queen Ymir and her most slightly bisexual lover Historia to our gay king Marco, yes, my half-eating husband is gay, it has been stated by Isayama himself in this tweet right here. So boys, don't come for me. Isayama has made it so that his characters are diverse but has also left a lot of things up for interpretation. One of these things is the gender of the well-loved character Hanji. Also the sexuality of our short King Levi, which I will not get into because I don't want unnecessary hate on Twitter. In the manga as well as in the anime, Isayama has tried his best so that Hanji's gender is never explicitly stated. He has even instructed fans to avoid using gendered pronouns when referring to Hanji or to at least use he and she at an equal frequency. But as with a lot of characters, English translators have gone against the creator and have given his character gendered pronouns. Now, I'm not too educated on Japanese pronouns, but from what I've gathered, it seems like a lot of their pronouns are gender neutral, so unless someone who dresses androgynously specifies their gender, you would have no idea. As you know, in the West, we take a completely different approach and gender everyone. That's why we see a lot of issues with Japanese characters once they get an English translation. Let's take the example of Kurapika from Hunter x Hunter. His gender was still a secret to Japanese fans because he didn't look like the stereotypical male or female, but with English fans, we knew right away. Despite the fact that we know that Hanji's sex is female, because you know, sex and gender is not the same thing, it's pretty clear that he either wanted to keep their gender a secret or wanted to have a non-binary character. And although I do acknowledge that the gender shouldn't be what we focus on in the series, I wanted to talk about this because of the subtle issues it causes. By using she, her pronouns when referring to Hanji just because they have boobs, you're indirectly reinforcing the narrative that if a person doesn't fit your biased views on what a man or woman looks like, that they're not valid. Just because someone doesn't fit a certain criteria doesn't make them any less legitimate. And I know a lot of people are going to come on here and tell me to stop trying to ruin a character or that it's not that serious, but it is. Since the beginning of time, the LGBT LGBTQ plus community have always been attacked or marginalized for not fitting societal norms. Trans people specifically rarely get the representation they deserve in anime. They're either used as a joke or just straight up disrespected. The reason why anime genres like Slice of Life, Shoujo, or even Isekai are so popular is because we like to romanticize our normal everyday lives and put ourselves in these characters shoes. Transgender, transsexual, non-binary, and everyone else that doesn't fit the gender norm don't get to fully put themselves in these characters' positions and feel like they're being represented. I feel like we should really just respect the author's wishes and just use gender neutral pronouns, non-binary people deserve good anime representation too. If we want to continue growing as a community and truly be all inclusive, we need to work together. People often just don't speak out on these things or just turn a blind eye, but by doing this you're just enabling the hate directed towards the LGBTQ plus community. A good example of this is when people refer to characters as traps, it all started as a joke and it was all fun and games until it wasn't. A lot of people took this as an opportunity to go out of their way and start attacking trans people, more specifically trans women, calling them traps and commenting under their posts telling people to beware. This derogatory term might not have started in the anime community, but it became super popular thanks to it. So to paraphrase, the word basically refers to cross-dressers who quote-unquote deceive people by dressing up as a different gender. It reinforces a very harmful stereotype of trans people, but Jamie, traps are cross-dressers. They're not trans people because they don't identify as such, and ho ho ho, that might be the case in some instances. But see, the issue here is that a lot of people have tiny, tiny brains and don't understand this and just start calling actual trans people traps because they ignorantly believe that cross-dressers and trans people are the same thing. They see no distinction between the two. This article does a better job at explaining everything and I highly recommend you read it. I'll link it in the description down below. Now going back to what I was saying, a good example of this is the character Aruka from Hunter x Hunter who is said to be born male but clearly identifies as female. Trans folks see no difference between between her and let's say Felix from ReZero. Um, hi guys, editing me here. So I did more research on the whole Felix situation and I found out that she is indeed a trans girl. Um, the author did a spin-off story between her and Krush and uh, she explicitly states that she does in fact see herself as a woman. She is in fact a trans girl 
And that is yet another example of another character that is a trans girl but is called a trap because transphobes see no difference between the two. So do with that information what we will enjoy the rest of the video another good example would be james from team rocket in pokemon popularizing the word further pushes their ignorant agendas and i'm not going to sit here and pretend like i'm perfect i've made these jokes in the past too but when i realized how much it was hurting people i stopped if a whole community is telling you that your joke hurts them then it's time to find something else to laugh at the word does hurt the trans community so i feel like we should refrain from using it when addressing someone unless you yourself are trans and are comfortable with it and that's all for now thank you for listening and i try my best to get all my points across but i'm sure i missed a few i'm personally not trans myself so i can't put myself in you guys' shoes but i hope i could shed a light on a few things and i hope this video didn't come off as ignorant that was not at all my intention i also hope that we can learn from each other and grow together once again thank you for watching this and and I'll hopefully see you next time. Have a wonderful day, guys.